Borida, good morning. A croeso, i gwasanaeth genedigaeth ein harglwydd sedd, dydd nadole Christ. A warm welcome to this service of spiritual communion to celebrate the nativity of our Lord, Christmas Day. Let us begin. represents the birth of Christ. The flame of this candle reminds us that he is the light of the world and that if we follow him we will never walk in darkness but will have the true light of life. O oh God, as we light this candle May the blessing of Jesus Christ come to us, warming our hearts and brightening our way. May Christ, our Saviour, bring light into the darkness of this world and to us as we wait for his coming again. Amen. We say together the opening prayer. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed 
and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Er holl a lliog ddiw, sy'n ma ddau bawb sy'n wir edifeiriol, a drigar hawdd dych, ach rhydd hai o bechod, eich cadan hai mewn daioni, ach cadw yn y bwy tragwyddol. Trwy Iesu Grist, ein hadwy. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll say together now the Gloria in Excelsis. Glory to God in the highest and peace to the people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for Christmas Day Almighty God, you have given us your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and, as at this time, to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that we, who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Cleo, <laughs> In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. 
children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. be acceptable to God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know whether you're familiar with the poem The Blind Men and the Elephant. It was written by John Godfrey Sachs in the 19th century, but this story is much older than that. It is thought to have originated in ancient Indian subcontinent. It tells of three men, and they are keen to understand what kind of creature an elephant is, and each comes forward to touch it, so they can create their own mental picture of it. The story illustrates the way in which different perspectives result in different conclusions about the same object. The man who feels the elephant's tail concludes that an elephant is like a rope. The one who encounters its sides believes that it to be like a wall, while the one who feels its tusk thinks an elephant is like a spear. Unable to comprehend the size of the creature and the fact that they have all felt a different part of it, they get into a huge argument. The story shows that the problems of perspective that arise with unseen objects also arise when it comes to our own desires, ideas and beliefs. Matthew and Luke's Gospels give quite different accounts of the familiar Christmas story Matthew's story is one of ancestry. He was keen to promote the power of the Jewish ancestors. While Luke's story, which is set in the lectionary for this year, is more domestic. It is Mary's story and the story of her family and the journey to Bethlehem. The beginning of the Gospel of John which deals with the question of how Christ arrived on this world and began his ministry here, approaches the incarnation in a very completely different way. There is no attempt by John to explain the how and the where, but simply to set the event in the much wider context of heavenly truths and purposes. 
It is another writer's viewpoint on the same mystery. When the biblical canon was agreed, all the books that were gathered together for the Bible, all three versions made the final cut. And those who made the decision about what to include recognised the importance of different points of view. Each one helped a different set of people to understand what had happened and how significant it was for them. Now while Matthew and Luke tell a very human story, John's Gospel makes its focus the eternal nature of Christ and his relationship within the Godhead, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. But all agree that God became flesh and lived among us. Now perhaps you have your own favourite version of the Christmas story. But how could one short set of words possibly convey everything about God's incarnation, that great mystery? God is too big for one story. And how could one story cover the experience of every human being who encounters God? There are too many of us with different lives lived in different places. The range of our human relationships and our ideas about God are as varied as the number of human beings who have ever lived on this earth. Like the blind men who argued over the nature of an elephant, we may have a limited perspective, but this Christmas could be a time to think more broadly and to wonder at the miracle we celebrate. What reaction does it inspire in us? Christ speaks to us through Matthew's story of kings and wise men with all the fear the news of his birth instilled in Herod. Luke encourages us to think about a young girl's willingness to do as God asks, no matter what the cost. While John's speaks to us of a light that can, cannot be extinguished, no matter how deep the darkness we encounter. We have a lot to think about. We return to these stories every year, but we can never plumb the depths of their meanings. The very thought of God becoming a human being is enough to contemplate a whole lifetime long. And now to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we give what is most chiefly due, all honour and glory, power and might, now and forevermore. Amen. We say together a baptismal creed. I believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. I believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again. I believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Wethyun, let us pray. As we treasure all that has happened and ponder on the mystery of Christ's birth, we call on the compassion of God, who has revealed his love for the whole of humanity through Jesus Christ, 
our Saviour. We rejoice in the angel's message and praise you with heavenly song. May the lives of all people be filled with faith in Christ. God of compassion and love, raise our hopes to heaven. Brush the begeliaid i weld y cwbl oedd wedi digwydd. Cyflawner da adewidion y mywydau rhai isel radd. O ddiw tri garedd a chariad, cyfod ein gobeithion i'r nefoedd. We have seen your son, a sign of peace for all. Give us a longing for your peace and a love of your kingdom. God of compassion and love, raise our hopes to heaven. Gogoneddun amulian undi, am bopeth a glosom ac a welsom. Gwynain ni na wyddys i rannu'r newyddion da am enedigaeth Christ. O ddiw trigaredd a chariad, cyfod ein gobeithion i'r nefoedd. We treasure the mystery of our Saviour's birth. May our prayer and worship raise our hearts and lives to heaven. God of compassion and love, raise our hopes to heaven. Can Molundi am a cupola a amlukir and hrev David, Llanwer ein catrevi, ant hyloeth a golini Christ. O ddiw tri garedd a chariad, cyfod ein gobeithion i'r nefoedd. God our Father, the compassion and love you have for the whole human race is now revealed through the birth of your Son in Bethlehem. As heaven and earth are united in song, may the message received by lowly shepherds raise our hopes to heaven that we may look forward to the fullness of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, each in our own language. Ein tad yr hwnnw i ten y nefoedd, sanctaeddia de enw, dele de deunas, gwnele de rewyllus, megis yn y nef, felly ar y ddeiar hefyd. Dyro i ni heddiw ein bara beunyddiol, a mathau i ni yn dyletion, fel y myddai yw ninau yn dyletwyr. Ac na carwain ni i brofedigaeth, eith i'r gwared ni rhag drwg, can i seiddod ti o'r dewnas ar gallu a'r gogwniant yn oes oesoedd. Amen. When it is not possible to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, the Church teaches that God's grace is nevertheless accessible, that it is possible to make an act of spiritual communion. And today that is what we are going to do to celebrate the birth of Christ. I invite you to take a moment now to reflect upon the Eucharist and Christ's command to do this in remembrance of me before we say together the words of spiritual communion. We say together, O blessed Lord, in union with the faithful throughout the world, at every altar of your church where the Eucharist is being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. Since I cannot now receive you in the sacrament, I invite you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you 
and embrace you with my heart and mind and soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me, so that I may live and die in your love. Amen. We say together now the Anima Christi. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, refresh me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Lord, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Do not permit me to be separated from you and from the malicious enemy defend me. In the hour of my death, call me, and bid me to come to you, that with all the saints I may praise you for ever and ever. Amen. God our Father, your word has come among us in the Holy Child of Bethlehem. May the light of faith Illumine our hearts and shine in our words and our deeds through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Christ the Son of God, born of Mary, fill you with his grace to trust his promises and obey his will and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>